Hey there. So I want to introduce the coming video. It is a conversation with one of the administrators at South Florida Wet Shavers, a prolific Facebook group that also is actively involved in their local community, meeting up, designing sense, uh, organizing a whole bunch of, of different uh, activities to keep wet shavers engaged. And I've been lucky enough, I've gotten a chance to hang out with them and, uh, and see how they operate firsthand. So, of course, we went right to the, the main office, our respective offices, and uh, here's a little chat while we're both shaving in our bathrooms. Enjoy. Um, all right, so AMAC, yeah. can you just tell us like why you're lathering? Give people a feel for what is South Florida Wet Shavers. So, uh, it sort of ha it just sort of happened overnight. You know, I got into um, it's like a Jerry Maguire thing. Is it just like a mission statement, and then it kind of happened, even <laughs> though I didn't present it that way. You know, um, I got into wet shaving in 2014. And with all the groups that were out there, all the shave groups, there, you know, granted, there's not as many, there were not as many then, there are now, but there was a lot of them out there, and, and I just kind of got engrossed in it, right? And uh, I saw, I saw a, a particular artisan, I saw certain soaps by a particular artisan that were not available. Yeah. Right. So I inquired about that and um, it was Douglas, mm -hmm. Mike, and he kind of told me, um, you know, when they, when they have meetups and I didn't know anything about meetups at the time, yeah. when they had meetups, he would make them, and, you know, distribute them, you know, however many, four, five, six, ten. Sure. And I said, okay, well, I want to get a custom set. And this was just me. There was no group at that point. Right. He told me there was a minimum number to buy, and I reached out on one of those groups where there was like a thousand people. Mm -hmm. Who's in the South Florida area and wants to meet up? Yeah. And uh, a couple people responded. Lee Michael Morrison responded to me PM. Now, I'm also still new to Facebook at this particular point. Yeah. I, I'm not really <laughs> versed in it. And, uh, him and I started chatting and we're interested in getting the setup. And then Douglas suggested we get our own group page because we're our put my post was just getting lost in the thread. Yeah. So that to Lee and then South Florida Wet Shaver was two members at the time and Lee was the guy who created it. Uh -huh. And then from there it was, you know, I grew up with known since since I was twelve years old. Right. Right. And uh, has he always smelled like strawberries? Or is that more more of a recent thing? Oh, he, he 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 always smells good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the group started, and then you know people started to come in. Yeah. And then we began the journey of okay, well, where are we going to meet? When are we going to meet? And right. all that. And then that's how the group started. So really, it's it's similar to most of the other groups in how it started. Like-minded individuals with wet shaving. Mm -hmm. And just the passion of the hobby. That's awesome. So you have a couple of events a year. What's how many people generally show up at your at your larger events? Larger events, sixty. Nice. Yeah. And so they're almost all from South Florida, then, I assume. Yes. Um, well, yes. For for those events, yes. If somebody within the group, um, the group is intended to. Uh, have people who have ties to South Florida, mm -hmm. here, family here, relatives here, they vacation here all the time. So in order to be a member, that's kind of like, a, it's a basic requirement, but we didn't want it to be, you know, a thousand, four thousand members mm -hmm. and like another group. Right. That was kind of how it, it, it started. Um, you know, first meetup wasn't large like that. The first meetup was 13 people, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it went well. Everybody had a good time, and we, you know, we meet, met a lot of individuals I never knew before. And then, uh, you know, kind of went off from there. And now we kind of have where 
big meetups, we have two a year. And we do have, we do have mini meets. Mm -hmm. um, and because of where we are in proximity to each other, a lot of times we, you know, we'll just, people will get together, you know, um, two, three people will get together just randomly, you know, it turns into, you know, friends from it. And I remember you guys uh, organized a little mini meet two years ago when I came down. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun. Uh, everyone kind of busted out <laughs> with 15, 20 soaps or razors <laughs> or splashes, you know, put them on the table. The bar gets confused as to whether you're bringing in other people's alcohol or something. And, you know, then they realize that it's not actually drinkable alcohol and they, they relax. Yeah. <laughs> It's um, you know, we're we're pretty we're pretty uh fortunate that a mini meet, you know, like when you came down, a spur yeah. of the moment, five maybe to show yeah. up, yeah, and uh and and that's not even really all the people that could have shown up at the time. Just right, you know, there's a little more planning. We could have had more, but um, that happens. It doesn't happen as often now, just because things are getting a little bit crazier and um, outside lives take precedence. Yeah, and then, yeah, there's so much involved with these big meetups that yeah. a lot of time goes into planning that. That sure. is, we sort of have slipped away from the mini meets, but that's going to be something to focus more this this coming year. Right. Well, uh, it's very exciting having experienced, you know, part of it firsthand. Uh, it's a really energetic group. Uh, it's really cool that you all have kind of um, made a, a mission of developing special projects with your favorite artisans and then uh, you know, we're lucky enough to be able to to share them more broadly uh, after your meetups and i've got a stack of them right here so i'm using as i showed before riptide which is probably the first of your group sense that really uh captivated me strawberry okay. and fahrenheit cologne yeah. right that's a combo yeah um, Twizzlers was the was the the, the uh, scent behind the strawberry bar. Okay, that's awesome. Um, you know, and in some ways, I'm looking through my den here. I mean, I don't have a lot of strawberry scents. Sometimes I pair it not with the matching splash, and sometimes I'll pair it with, you know, being Ferris or Man Patches, for example, of strawberry, uh, basil, and black pepper. But uh, I, I've, I've enjoyed it for years. Uh, and now that it's in this this new tallow base from K Shea Works, I'm enjoying it even more, quite honestly. Yeah. Uh, and there are others, right? We've got, I mean, I'm gonna say this might be my favorite scent of the year so far, which is what you're using right now. Yeah. The collaboration with Katie's Bubble is the summer solstice. Yeah. I, I really love this, yeah. Yeah, cheers. It's it's a, it's an awesome one. Um, so good. It, it's an awesome scent that kind of you know, out of the little vial that we got at first, it, yeah. it didn't have the impact that it right. does now. Right. And, uh, I mean, I'm, I just gathered, you know, however long I've been loading and right. lab, and yep. it's just a potent smell, but it's, it, it's, it's strong, but not overpowering. Right. It's, it's just, it, it fulfills like every niche. It's got a little fruit, a little uh, spice, a little sweet, a little, you know, depth. Like it's, it's, jack of everything um i really love it um some others that uh i i mean honestly there's i would happily use any one of these on any given night uh, yeah. and I've, I've used many on many nights <laughs> but, uh this is uh one of your group's breakout scents the uh key lime barber shop right here um, yeah. this is re-released in the tallow uh this is a newer one citrus fair day which yeah. is a collaboration with olio um, I, I picked this up recently, also uh, really impressed with, with how that smells, it's new to me. Um, Nightcap is what I would describe uh, relative to the others as, as a you know, more significant uh, change of direction. It's, it's really like, uh, has, I guess, a night vibe. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it's for really going out. Yeah. I, I'm old and boring, you know, I don't, I don't go out anymore. Uh, so I smelled this and, and, you know, I was, I just started to cry. 
where did that years go? Um, <laughs> but you can wear it. You can wear it at night, even though you're not going anywhere. <laughs> just, uh, I mean, I, just in my I bed. Do it many that's nights. That's what you do, and it works for you. I even shave, and I'll put the splash on and uh, <laughs> keep it going. That's right. It's like Night at the Roxbury, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Brian was telling me that these two were, were actually designed in tandem with this being kind of the, the opener of your day and this being the, the finisher. Is that yeah. that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, the, the, in, in kind of, you know, they, they, those two artisans didn't work together. It just right. kind of evolved that way. That was on uh, your part. Yeah, the way the way the events came out, and then um, it just like you said, when when you smell the nightcap, it has more of that night yeah. day, night, if you will, or going yeah. out uh, vibe to it. Yeah. That um, and then the other one is just it's refreshing uh, the way it opens up in the sense yeah, for sure. You know, and it and it fits. You know, obviously. A, so in the beginning, a lot of the stuff was just based on, you know, South Florida, South Florida vibe. Right. And, you know, we have the beach, we have the ocean fence yeah. and that fresh uh, uh, citrus. And, yeah. uh, you know, and I know Chris wanted to stay away from that a little bit, but mm -hmm. it does have that same allure of the yeah. citrus. It, it right. captures it in a different way, which is what's impressive. Yeah. Um, and, you know, obviously we can schedule another time you know, I can pick your brain, like what it's like to partner with Katie's Bubbles and Oleo. Like, you know, it's wow. It, it's it's amazing. It's humbling, and it's just just all out cool that all of these great artisans were able to do this type of projects with 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 them on, and then provide it to them to everybody. Yeah. Um, you know, in the beginning, um, the the meetup sets were strictly for attendees only. Yeah, we realized that uh, we, were, we were we were limiting a ourselves mm -hmm. and limiting you know what the artisan could get out to everybody else by doing that because yeah. there are a lot of people who do have ties to South Florida but they don't live here yeah. anymore. Right. Um. So we we kind of opened it up. That's what happens, right? When people are retired, they move from South Florida. No, when they're trying to earn a living. <laughs> yes. They, <laughs> they get out of South, South Florida. Florida. Yeah. And then yeah. when they retire, yeah. they come back. <laughs> So when when I when we all get a little bit older, we you right. know, actually have a larger group of, of elderly. Right. You know. <laughs> yes, that's right. You'll be shaving each other by then. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, all right. So let's get to it. I've got uh, I've got an aluminum paradigm here. Well, yeah. You guys are special with those. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I used to have a name tag saying special. And now I just you know. You don't need, there. You don't need one. You're you're special <laughs> VIP. You just Aww. show. Everybody knows. <laughs> I have a system 434C with a persona red blade. All right, so you're basically, you know, you're in the vast majority of people who swear by the 434C. You know, yeah. in, the, in the beginning, this was way too aggressive for me. Really? And I turned, I turned away from it, uh, which, you know, this, this is similar to the Edwin Jagger D89. Yeah. That was my very first razor. Wow. So you're pretty mild. Right? Way too aggressive for me, so I got rid of it, which I'm. Yeah. I'm that's the one razor I do regret getting rid of. Yeah. My very first one, my 40th yep. birthday. Right, right. Uh, but it was too aggressive. I was like, I can't use it, even though it was gorgeous. Right. And now things have changed. They have. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny also, um, you know, I think there are a lot of people who have a, a rough experience, so to speak, um, with a kind of a, a mild or intermediate blade and razor combo and uh -huh. then you know they come around to trying something that is more aggressive sharper and more aggressive and it actually you know if you have the technique to support it they actually have less irritation because they're able to accomplish a shave in fewer passes um, and I suspect that's what happens with many of them yeah and you know most well a lot of stories the beginning the first shaves were very yeah. disappointing and uh, butcher-like, um, but when you keep with it, right? Uh, and you know, like most stories, they got into it to save money, right? Uh, so you, kind of, you know, some keep with it, some don't. I, I kept with it obviously, and uh, I found I really look forward to shaving afterwards. Yeah, for sure. 
and you know my uh, a little bit about my past and why I have as many soaps and senses I do. I enjoyed a lot. I had a lot of colognes, you know, sitting. Do you do you pair them up? Uh, I would like to use the word I match them. <laughs> okay. If it's not close enough of a resemblance, I can't. Yeah. Okay. So I, I tend to do that. You know, many people are uh, really diehard about matching their soap and splash, and I don't. I don't have enough space. Yeah. Uh, and so I get, you know, a couple of aftershaves active in my rotation at any one time, and they've got to, they've got to, like, reach a broad enough. Uh, range of scents of the soaps I'm likely to use. Okay, so you have more soaps. Oh yeah. And less of the matching splashes. I probably yeah. have about a 10% matching rate. Oh wow. Maybe, maybe less. Um, but you know, most of the people I talk to, uh, or a hobbyist like me, they have, you know. 90 plus percent matching rate. Mine, mine is all matching. Yeah. Um, and in some cases, the bomb, and in some cases, the bomb um, right. that matches to it. Yeah. As close as can be. Right. Um, because, you know, you, I mean, you can't, sometimes you just can't match that. Right. But, the, but the, the time and energy they put into that, you can't match that sometimes. All right, so we'll do one more pass here. Um, let me ask you, um, what was the most surprising scent of, of these scents you worked on? And I didn't show them all, but uh, what's been your most kind of surprising success? Success? Mm -hmm. Yeah, which one, I, I guess failure. <laughs> which one uh, turned out much differently than you anticipated, uh, either in terms of how it was received or uh, just the scent itself was very different than you envisioned? Um, you know, the summer solstice kind of, um, at first a little vile, it was hard to get a real grasp of it mm -hmm. and, and the strength and the depth of the scent. Mm -hmm. Um, that one probably, not just because I'm using it, uh, it probably surprised me the most and I used it, flashed on me. Um, that probably surprised me the most because at the time, what we were, you know, the holy cough, yeah, the nightcap. I that scent uh, I had on on some like five know, circular box hmm. uh, cotton things. Yeah. Oh but yeah. That was very strong, and that right. one was right up my alley. Uh huh. Um, I, I'm very cologne based. So it's like your your tagline for the man who goes to bed smelling good. Because well, I think it's supposed to be for the man who goes out smelling good, but for you it's really good. It's the man who goes to bed smelling good. Stop, stop after the man who's smelling good. It doesn't matter <laughs> what you're doing. <laughs> okay. It doesn't matter if you're solo or there's people around you. Sense, I mean, we all know sense have yeah. play factor in, in the moods. For sure. uh, that we have. And I, I enjoy all of these scents. The scents I have that I keep, I enjoy them all. And yeah. I'll wear them randomly without shaving at times. I do, I splash on a lot of aftershave, uh, whether or not I'm shaving. You know, just before I, I, I leave, to go out, whether I shave at the beginning or end of day. Um, but I only. There are only a few colognes that I do that with. Part of it is I'm married to someone who doesn't like many strong scents. Uh, yeah. uh, so I, I'm just sort of uh, uniquely trapped that way. <laughs> Other no, than that, I don't have that. It happens. I don't have that outside of work, but in work, my yeah. uh, my manager, she is extremely sensitive. Uh -huh. um, so. I don't wear my splashes, my colognes yeah. to work anymore because it just, yeah. it's 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 not enjoyable for me anymore. Right. I know if her and I have to interact or in close proximity, 
It's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. So you said one more pass. So you do a two pass? No. I do usually three, but you know, I think you usually do two, don't you? Uh, no, I no, most m usually I do three. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm game if you are. Oh yeah. Well, do you, do you feel like um, I know you're a big fan of that movie Anchorman? Uh, do you feel like there's parallel between South Florida wet shavers and um, another group of wet shavers, like there is with you know that scene in Anchorman where the different news crews come and battle it out? Right. They have all the weapons and stuff. To be honest, not currently. I don't. Um, because you vanquished them. I'm sorry? You vanquished them all? Let's repeat the question again then. Maybe I misunderstood you. <laughs> I, I didn't vanquish anybody. Everybody's love and welcome. <laughs> That's the thing. You guys are like, South Florida Wet Shavers is like uh, that crew in, in Anchorman, right? The Anchorman crew, when they go into that parking lot and battle all the other news crews. Yeah. So, you know. So, so what's the other group that you're battling? What's, what, you know, who, who are these poor souls? They're, they're not ready yet. I'm right. Saying, they're not, they're not, they don't have either, they don't have the logistics of the people that we do to be able to get together, to put together meetups as often as we do at the size we do, mm -hmm. um, or they just have a different vision. Um, you know, uh, I'm not really sure. There are, there are groups that do get collaborations and they, you know, they have meetups. Um, but... You're not thinking big enough, Anthony. You you need to look across the pond, okay? Take oh, aim, I take don't aim at those UK groups or those Aussie groups right now who are laughing at South Florida wet shavers, okay? Oh yeah, I don't know about them. So I you know, <laughs> I if I learn about them, then I'll follow their path. <laughs> okay. But I'm um, yeah, and so mainly I'm speaking about the U.S. groups. Um, I don't really know a lot about the one, the groups that are, are overseas. Um, and my time inside of a lot of other groups has been diminished tremendously since the time that I do spend on the groups is mainly within, and it's not even mainly in within our group anymore, South Florida West, there was, uh, there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that, um, that I work with. Sure, as an admin. You yeah, know, so I don't. Yeah. I'm not in the group every day, seeing all the posts, posting all the them myself, reading them all, um, as much as I used to. Um, but so when I say that, uh, they're just there. The, there are there are meetups, and they are big, and there are custom vendors. But I, I'm I'm trying to think of. How often they do it? Do they do the releases in the manner we do? Where you know, um, yeah. we, we we have a try. We have more where it was an ongoing. You could get it ongoing at times. Um, and when we do our meetups, we do a lot of giveaways. But we raise a lot of money to be able to do that. For sure. And so, a portion of of the sales from your show helps to do that. Yes. And. You know, I think, from my perspective, having been fortunate enough to be involved in shave groups that, that have meetups um, and familiar with yours, you know, I, I think it's really one of the things that makes um, wet shaving a hobby as opposed to um, something that went from, for most people, a chore to uh, something they might even enjoy to something that they really uh, consider themselves part of a community and part of uh a growing segment of hobbyists and uh, you know that's uh, very very awesome that you guys are able to, to do that and we're excited to be a part of it um, you know honestly that's uh, one of the best parts is being able to introduce our crazy hobby to people who are just getting to, to experience a good shape for the first time and yeah. let them know that there's plenty of people who have Plenty more advice, guidance, and uh, enthusiasm to share. Agreed. Um, you know, another 
really interesting part about this whole hobby that we're in. And, and, and I know you can attest to them on many levels that, uh, and, and, you know, for us, a lot of it is local. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you think of all of the people that you're in communication with. Yeah. Um, and, and some of them are on a daily basis, and yet you've never met them. That's, that's very true. And yet, just like when you came down, you know, you didn't, you haven't met any of us for the most part, and we all show up, and it's like we, like it's normal, like it's a reunion. That's right. You know, anywhere you're traveling, there's going to be people that are in the area that you cross paths with, and it, you know, you get together and have a beer. Dinner. Um, in some cases, I've known where, you know, like John SMG, he traveled to a meetup. I forget where it was, and he stayed. You know, somebody picked him up from the airport. And yeah, out. yeah, I know he came to New York at one point. Yeah, I think it might have been that meetup, or no, the Philly meetup, maybe. Uh, possible. Yeah. Them. I'm not sure. Yeah. So you know, that's you know, the soaps and the hardware and the software, all and of that. The, yeah, and the artisan scene itself. You know, you get to hang out with them, you get to meet them. Every the story, everybody has, um, you know, a past and how they got here, and you get to learn about everybody. I think, in my mind, it is the best argument in favor of social media. Yes, yeah. there's so many against. <laughs> there are there are a ton of them, for sure, and there's a ton of them against within our day world. Yes. Um, you know, but you figure out how to uh, keep your emotions in check and not react to individuals and keep going forward with the mission and goal and the positive part of it. And uh, there's a lot of good in it. There's a lot of good people in it. There's a lot of great artisans in it. Um, I, I'm not 100% sure. I'm going to tell you a little story about uh, taking bubbles. Not a, I, I'm not 100% sure about it. This, I wanted one of my first interactions with him uh, was at one of our, our meetups when, mm -hmm. we, when we released Key Lime Power Shop in Miami Heights. Mm -hmm. um, he, there was another gentleman in the group, and uh, he, he was a wet shaver for a little bit longer than I was. He already mm -hmm. with Katie's Bubbles, Chris. Mm -hmm. and, one of the soaps that they made, I think it was marzipan or baby cake, or something. Oh, yeah. He sure. made 50 of them without question. He just made them on his own. Yes. Yeah. Down and we passed it out. And, uh, you know, there was no communication like, this is what we're doing. Can you, right. can you donate? He just did it on his own. And, um, you know, yeah, there's a business aspect, but I don't think that's where he comes from. You know, I don't. That's the type of person he is. He just generally does it if he wants to right. do it. Right. You know, you know him enough to know that that's not where uh, yeah. that was coming from. Yeah. No, the the artisans uh, take good care of us, and we try to take good care of them and yeah. uh, keep the community growing. And that means we love everything that they do. Um, you know, they're but they're, everybody's so different and so unique. We all have different styles, and different tastes, and different scents that we appreciate. Right. And that's what keeps it going, you know? Yep. All right, so I just did the uh, the post, which is the pre-post summer solstice. So I did the pre before we went on camera, and now I just did the post. I think, uh, yeah, you know, it's, I love this stuff. Uh, it doesn't, as far as a pre-post product, it doesn't uh, last long as far as the scent goes, but the quality is outrageous, and um, yeah. you know, I, I literally, you know, I use it uh, almost daily since I've you've gotten been, this bottle. Yeah, I, you've been using it. Mine yeah. Is, I mean, and I <laughs> and I use it not obviously not as often. Yeah. As I mean, I, I literally just keep throwing this stuff on. <laughs> I yeah. love it. Now, now I uh, find that the scent does give me a little bit of length hmm. uh, in time. Um, Obviously not as close as at first, but right. I find it lasts a little a little long, yeah. long uh, yeah. for me. But uh, the the I don't know, it's just a great scent. It is a great scent. And, and, uh, and at night, you know, at night 
getting ready for you know close up night to bed and it's just one of those good refreshing scents. For sure. Absolutely. And you know, I I continue to love Riptide. Uh, I'm continuing to really enjoy this uh, the newer formula from K Shave, the tallow base, I think has been so fun to be a part of that. And uh, that's really awesome that these scents now are are really like resurfacing at the launch of their tallow line. So it's it's very fortunate uh, combination of, of yeah. circumstances. I'm excited. I'm